The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, good morning everyone. Happy New Year. My name is Tia Haslam and I would like to thank you for joining us in today's webinar. I would like to welcome you to our Never Stop Learning webinar series live sessions brought to you by CRM Dynamics, one of the largest Microsoft Gold Partner in Canada, 2019 Microsoft Impact Award winner, and a member of Microsoft Global Inner Circle Partners for Business Applications in 2019 and 2020. Also, we would like to give a warm welcome for Marketing Copilot that is co-hosting our presentation today. Before we begin our session, I would like to take you through some guidelines during our webcast to ensure that everyone can listen to the presentation. We have muted all the lines, and if you would like to ask a question, please use the chat or question function on your control panel, and we will address them at the end of the presentation. So today's webinar topic is Marketing Automation Year in Review. We are very excited to have Rob Trix, our VP Sales and Marketing from CRM Dynamics, and Marie Wies, founder of Marketing Copilot, presenting for us today. I hope you enjoyed the webinar. And now, without further ado, I would like to invite Marie and Rob to begin their presentation. That's great. Thank you, Tia. Good morning, everybody. Hope you're having a great day today. You're somewhere safe and warm. I don't think it's snowing anywhere uh, today, but maybe it is where you are. Um, today, we're going to talk a lot about marketing. We're going to talk about digital marketing, uh, the year in review. Um, uh, it's being presented by Marie Weiss from Marketing Copilot. So hello, Marie. Hi, everyone. Good morning. And so um, what I'd like to do is just kick things off by welcoming everybody here and, and, and really establish what are you hoping, what should you be hoping to get out of this session? Um, just a quick note on that. So we've done a lot of work with customers in the space of CRM, and you would you would assume that because our company name is Dynamics, is uh, CRM Dynamics, and we implement the Dynamics 365 solution for customers. <clears throat> but a lot of customers are looking for ways to improve their digital marketing capability. And so working with Marie and her company, uh, with a lot of our clients, we've been able to help them do just that. So in the session today, I hope what you're going to see is a lot of work that Marie and her company has done to, uh, to, to really dig up what's really going on out there, what, sh what kind of platforms and what kinds of um, sort of digital marketing processes should you put in place, and what works, what doesn't work, those types of things. So I think uh, we're going to be talking for about 40 minutes or so, and then uh, we'll open it up for questions. But if you do have a question during it, you can also put it into the system, into the GoToWebinar. Uh, question tool on the side there. So my name is Rob Triggs. I'm responsible for sales and marketing for our company, Serum Dynamics, and uh, we practice what we preach. Like we live, eat, sleep, and breathe what Marie's going to talk about today. And so we're very excited to hopefully bring this capability to some of you that have dialed into the session today. Um, I've spent many years in sales, more on the sales side than marketing side, but um, I consider myself a sales junkie. So all about selling. And for me, I've seen over the last probably five or six years where sales and marketing really aren't two functions really anymore. They're really almost one. And so uh, we, we've got this funny word we use called smarketing. It's really sales and marketing working together. And I think the way that Marie uh, and our company work together is the epiphany of that. It's um, we are we are smarketers. So I'll, I'll, I'll pass it over to Marie now and ask her to introduce herself and kick off the session. Thanks so much, Rob, and, and thank you everyone for joining us this morning. Um, my name is Marie Weiss. I founded a company about uh, 15 years ago called Marketing Copilot. I have a lot of experience in the tech sector, and <clears throat> I'm noticing uh, a real shift going on, and we're going to get into that in a minute. We're going to open the session by talking a little bit about the good, the bad, and the ugly from last year, which is really a reflection of the shift that's happening in the sales and marketing alignment, and what we need to be thinking about going forward, not just with tools, but as we're organizing our marketing and sales departments. Uh, marketing Copilot has been helping tech companies, as I said, for close to 15 years, but what really sets us apart is our understanding of how to map the buyer journey on to tools like website and marketing automation products. So it's really taking your sales process and mapping it to your digital strategy so that you can drive marketing qualified leads and sales qualified leads for your organization. And so while we obviously handle the 
tactical execution of things in you know setting up marketing automation systems and making them run properly we believe that the mechanics of digital marketing is is well understood and people have that under control what we're going to talk about in the presentation today is about why marketers are struggling to get the results they're looking for and so i think without further ado we'll jump right into that rob is there anything else you wanted to say to get us started or can we jump right in no i think we should jump right in okay so let's talk about the good um you know the, we're going to speak about the good the bad and the ugly of of marketing automation and what we saw as part of the year in review the really interesting thing that i'm seeing happening in the marketplace is that everybody is understanding and maybe it's because they had it hammered into their head in 2019 that the buyer is in control and that we can no longer, particularly if we're a B2B company, we can no longer rely on our sales teams to go out and drum up those leads and talk to those leads and educate those leads because they don't want to talk to sales. They want to self-serve. They want to understand what you can do for them based on the content on your website, the content in your blogs, the things you're posting in social. And they're making a decision and are 60 to 70 to 60 to 70 percent through the buyer journey before you even know they're looking. And so that means for marketers that we really have to up our game as far as how we're embracing people in the buyer journey. So people I talked to in 2019 and, and all the companies we went and talked to, they really are starting to understand this. They're understanding how important it is to get the right content on their website. It's how important it is to have the right tools in place. And they're really trying to figure out how to solve the lead management problem. So that's the good. Did you have a comment, Rob? Yeah, I'm just going to ask you to repeat that percentage. I just really want to make sure everyone on the call really understands what you just said. The uh, Yeah, the, the scary percent that 60 to 70 percent of prospects or customers looking for a solution like yours are already through their decision making process before you ever hear from them and before they ever before you ever know they're looking right so i think that's critical because as a as a as a veteran sales guy if a customer comes to me somehow and they've already have gone through that much of the sales process it's almost impossible for me to change what they're going to do and that's where you get those crazy old school sales tactics that you see people do right and so I think right. for organizations have to, have to, have to recognize that this fact is true, is real, and they need to do something about it. So I just want to make sure that that point really gets driven home. Thank you. So the good news is we're seeing a lot of people in the marketplace understanding this. And the reason that we can back this up <clears throat> and know that so much time and money is going to get spent on this in 2020 is that companies like Salesforce Ventures, which has uh, it's, a, it's an investment arm of Salesforce, has launched a $50 million consultant trailblazer fund, and they're pumping money into service companies and consulting companies who are helping people implement CRM and marketing automation properly. So they're seeing this. They're seeing the tide, the tide turning on people not just seeing marketing automation and CRM in particular as a nice to have. It's a must have if they want to compete today. And they're putting money behind it to help companies compete. And we're seeing this in a whole bunch of other different places where money is getting launched to support this idea of helping people really get that customer journey down and how it flows through your marketing automation and your CRM tools. And that I think is really important. In 2018 and then into 2019, we're seeing companies like HubSpot who are incredibly competitive in the marketing automation market um, upping their revenue. Uh, and by 37%, 35% in professional services, 37% in, in uh, subscription services. So we're seeing upstarts like HubSpot really start to build revenue dollars as a result of the need in the market and people wanting to map this buyer journey with tools like Salesforce, like HubSpot and, and like Dynamics. People are going to want to use Dynamics products to do this. We're really starting to see it, it happen. The bad news is people want to adopt customer uh, marketing automation, but they're struggling with choosing the right tool, mapping the lead management process, setting it up correctly, aligning it with sales, getting that content strategy down. 
So as I mentioned at the top of the webinar, people are really understanding the mechanics of digital marketing. They know what SEO is. They know what blogging is. They know what email marketing is. And those mechanics are all there. But what they're not really getting is the strategy that should be put behind the content in order to help people in that buyer journey. So that's the bad news. That's what we're seeing as companies know they need to do it, but they're struggling. And why are they struggling? What is the number one reason? It's because they still think that marketing automation is a technology problem. They think if they buy the tool and put it in, it's going to work, their problem's going to be solved. But the reason that that's not happening, and the reason why that's so difficult for people then to get their mindset changed, is they have to understand that it's a buyer issue and how the buyer purchases. And the most important part of this in a lot of marketing departments, particularly product marketing departments say, well, here's what our product does. We'll just get it up on the website. We'll put that in an email campaign. It's not about what you want to tell them. It's about what they need to know. And this secret ingredient of understanding the buyer journey and what the content needs to be is where companies are really struggling. Rob, did you want to comment on that? Yeah, the buyer the the buyer journey. We even experienced this ourselves, where um, we had to change the way that we were doing our selling. And so, understanding the buyer's purchasing journey or purchasing um, process they're going through is really important. And aligning your tools to that, uh, we've we've implemented dynamics for lots of customers in marketing automation, and and some of them have had success, and some of them have really struggled, to be honest. And the piece that was missing is exactly what what you just said. They they didn't spend enough time understanding that, and um, and looking at the process versus trying to get the tool to do the work for them. So what we've also seen, and and something that people should consider um, when you want to get the follow up slides for this, there's a the Salesforce quantitative study. The next part of this that that so you know brutally painful for marketers is that. They did a study of 8,000 buyers in 16 countries, and 84% of those buyers polled said that their experience and purchasing and the way the company educates and the way that the company shares information and the way the company does outreach outweighs the capabilities of the product and even price. And 51% told Salesforce that vendors don't understand their needs and expectations. So we know that one of the largest CRM companies in the world doing a study is hearing this from buyers. And I think it's really important that we take this to heart and we think about what we can do about it. The ugly of what we saw last year is that this is the real ugly, is that because they're not getting this process under control, the majority of businesses today are losing leads on their website. Um, they can't manage the people who have taken the time to inquire, let alone map a buyer journey that speaks to them about how to make a purchase decision. And this is the real ugly. There's people who could be wanting to buy from you, but because you've made it difficult or you don't respond or you don't have good content on your website, you're losing leads. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Rob, because you guys have done some amazing research in this area. And I want you to tell our audience today about that research. Yeah, thank you. So, um, so if you listen to what Marie is saying, she's saying that the, you know the bad and the ugly are things that most companies are experiencing. And um, sometimes when you listen to these, well, you go on these webinars and you hear people talk about things, and you think, yeah, right, <laughs> they're just making up some stuff. But we've been doing this study now for I don't know, maybe five, almost five years, uh, four or five years now. And what we've been doing is we said, let's go test and see what a company will do if we actually submit a lead to their website to through their digital tools and ultimately their their website is the main tool we use and let's see what happens so we've been doing that for quite a while so we've tested over 1800 companies we submit the lead and which means the buyer has gone through you know maybe 60 to 70 percent of the buyer's pro buying process they re finally reach out to you to say hey I'm really interested in your product or service. Can you have someone call me uh, to give me a quote or a price or whatever it may be, right? And for some of you, you may not get a lot of that activity, and that's another topic, I think, for another day. But, <laughs> but uh, for those of you who are getting people coming in, um, uh, you need to handle it properly. So the buyer journey has changed. Uh, what we have done, we've tested 1,800 companies, and out of the 1,800 companies, 54% of those companies tested never get back to us. So just stop, stop there for a second. 
So let's say there's 100 companies on the webinar right now. That means 54% of you, if I submitted a lead, you're not going to get back to me at all. Think about that for a minute. And so it, that's a real problem. The next piece, though, is the ones that did get back to us, they took more than an hour to respond. Now, some of you may say an hour. Wow, that's amazing. Our company would take probably three days to get back to you. <laughs> and that's, that's a reality as well. But when you're dealing with digital and someone reaching out to you electronically, you need to get back to them very quickly. And some of the research, not that we've done, but other organizations have done, have said that you need to get back to the client in less than five minutes. And some of you may be going, oh my God, five minutes, you're gonna scare the pants off the customer. No, you're not. People expect a quick response today, right? And uh, so you need to have the tools and you need to have, more importantly, the process in place so you can do that. And the last point here, 82% didn't uh, try uh, a second time. So what we do is we, we submit the lead, we ignore it if they got back to us, we don't, we don't uh, respond, and we wait to see if they try a second time. And 82% never try a second time, they just give up. So for, for me or for us, we think this is an absolute epidemic. And over the last you know, four years or so that we've been doing this test, I expected to see the percentages shift and get better, and they haven't. They haven't gotten better. And so the opportunity for all of you that, is on, that are on the phone today, if you could just fix this one problem, you'd be ahead of your competitors, most likely. So anyway, that's uh, one I wanted to say about that. <laughs> So I love that research and you know I, I love that whole exercise because I think to your point it's it's really drilling into the singular problem that companies have to address. And so the three simple facts that we want to just reiterate in the ugly, buyer behavior is driving the sales process and we can't ignore that. Companies lack a clearly defined strategy for harnessing that and they're mismanaging leads. And I feel very strongly, and I know you share my thoughts on this, Rob, is that companies that don't embrace this and figure this out are not going to be in business three years from now because this is a competitive issue for their company. It adds value to their company uh, if they can get it right. If they were to go sell their business and they had this documented and in place, it adds tremendous value to their company uh, bottom line. And not to mention that it just shows people not just that they're in the game, that they're out there actively wanting to work with people. And so I think this is a part of the mindset that marketers are struggling with internally to get their management teams to understand that it's more than just spending money on AdWords. It's more than just having a blog. It's more than just doing email marketing. They have to really embrace that the dynamic here is changing. And we're going to get into that now. Mm -hmm. So what is really important to understand, and I've sort of created this graphic, is that the light blue part here is what buyers are doing when they're making a buying decision. All those different things that are happening online, you don't know about. Because then what you actually know about is just that little piece at the end where they've either contacted you or they've engaged with you. It's all of this stuff here in the middle that's happening that you don't know about. So I want you to take a minute as you're listening to this pod, uh, to this webinar, sorry, not podcast, um, and, talk, and think about what sales model you're using. Are you using inbound lead generation, which means that you've got a strategic content plan that drives interest, that you know how to track the difference between a marketing qualified lead and a sales qualified lead, and that you're bringing people to you so that you can at least engage in some type of online uh, relationship. Maybe you're using an outbound business development model, your cold calling, email blasts, trade shows. Maybe you're campaigning with paid ads. Or maybe you're doing a direct marketing relationship selling. Maybe you have the hunter farmers model in your organization. All of these models are important. But what's really important is all of them need to be integrated and they all need to be working together. And that's where we always run into challenges, that alignment between sales and marketing, that understanding that these components all have to work together. So why marketing automation matters so much then, regardless of what model you're using, and I hope you've sort of taken a minute to jot down maybe the areas where you're doing things, why marketing automation matters is that it's the most productive way to support the the prospective customer and they want to in the way they want to buy 
but it is also helping you combine this alignment of sales and marketing. And what's really important to understand the difference between CRM and marketing automation is the CRM system tracks an opportunity once you know who they are. Now you've entered information, you've put them down as a company contact, you know, the way Dynamics is structured, you've got your company contract at the top and then all the people who flow down through it, but you have to know who those people are. Marketing automation goes out and finds them for you or identifies them for you when they hit your website or identifies the things that they're looking to do. And so it's this new layer that needs to be added onto what you might already have in place today. Marketing automation is about tracking people up in this part of this journey that's happening online so that you know what they're doing rather than only knowing the little piece at the tail end when they've put their hand up and called you. So that's the main difference between the two tools. And that's where we're going to jump into today to talk about how that might be working in your organization and where you need to identify this shift that has to happen. So in the old technology model, we had inbound activity. We were identifying customers. We were going to trade shows. We were doing outreach. We were, you know, maybe doing some advertising and getting them to click through to a landing page. And once we thought there was any kind of vague interest, we were tracking them in the CRM and we were hoping to put them through a sales funnel that brings them as customers or customers or prospects. The old sales funnel is what we kind of call spray and pray. Get out there and try to talk to as many people as possible and see if we can whittle it down to find out who might be in cycle and who might actually be somebody through either the trade shows or the Google AdWords. And what we end up doing is we chase people and then we try to qualify them and we try to get to this closed deal. It's incredibly expensive, time consuming, and it's not the way people want to buy. So what we're seeing then is that sales is trying to control a big part of this process through campaigns that drive visitors and then we're this passive interest that somebody may or may not have. Now we're trying to get sales to hand that off. And Rob, I'm sure you'd agree with me when I say the biggest complaint that sales teams have of the marketing department is you're passing me leads that are a waste of my time. They're not ready to buy. And marketing's biggest complaint of the sales team is I'm generating leads for you and you're not doing anything with them. How many times have you heard that, Rob? Thousands. It's, it's the biggest challenge in organizations <laughs> with sales and marketing departments, right? <clears throat> and when I, when I was a younger sales rep, I was always complaining about the marketing lack of leads or quality of leads. And then the marketing team was always complaining about us because um, we had tools. We had a, this one company I worked for. We had an amazing CRM system. And even by having that tool, it didn't solve that problem. And um, so I'm sure. I'm sure you would agree, which is why you love the title marketing, is that marketers have to become salespeople and salespeople have to become marketers. Yeah, and, and I don't need to. Yeah, I agree. And I don't yeah, want to scare ahead. anybody into thinking, you know, if you're a marketer, you got to run out and be, you know, be a sales salesperson. But there, if you imagine two circles, uh, one labeled marketing and one labeled sales and start to merge them. And if you merge the two circles and overlap it, maybe 30 to 40%. That overlap of 30 to 40% is basically where um, you need to share, right? Because today, the two circles are are miles apart, and there's a chasm between <laughs> sales and marketing. And the chasm yeah. is where all the leads are falling into, right? They're falling into this pit. And, and, and um, you know, there's so many customers out there right now that want to do business with you, and you don't even know about them, right? You're not, you're not getting the right. consideration, and that's, that's the problem. Absolutely. So thank you for, for going to the circle analogy. I've kind of got a box and a circle because, you know, square, square peg, round hole. This is what, exactly what's happening. So we have to embrace not just this new technology model that there's the layer that needs to be put in front of the CRM so that we know where these people are, what they're doing, web tracking. Can we do lead scoring? Can we do social discovery? Can we find them? And that's where we're trying to bring them through inbound activity, through a really great blog title, a really great 
core piece of content they can download, a quick video they can watch that solves a problem they're looking to solve. We can find them and bring them into the, the process so that we can create that layer before they hit the CRM. And that's exactly what we need to do. And we need to flip the funnel. And the reason we need to flip the funnel is that we're building a series of yeses to get them up to that point where we can pass them to sales, which says they're qualified. When I say marketers need to become salespeople, what I mean is they really need to understand the sales process and they really need to understand the buyer journey. And so things that they can be doing outside uh, the organization, like social media, influencer marketing, it's all about establishing that unique value proposition that then maybe the person says yes to because they've clicked on something, they've read something, they've interacted with something, they've shared value added content that then leads to something where we can use a conversion point to find out who they are. And then we can run them through that automated process. So then rather than waiting after somebody's contacted you on a website, you've put them into a workflow where every three days they're receiving an email on a business problem they're trying to solve. So you're warming them up to the fact that you're an expert on the area and that you're going to help them solve their problem, not just chase them to say, are you ready to buy? In that old funnel, that's all we were doing is chasing. But good content and running them through the inbound process means we can just warm them up on good content to understand where they're at and if they can be qualified that leads to a sales dialogue that's then a qualified lead we've tracked and managed that gets passed to sales. So the big change here that I want to draw everyone's attention to and and I'm going to uh, a, a, a attempt to use the <laughs> the uh, the highlighter today is this right here right here. And this is where Rob's talking about the circle, this circle that overlaps with this circle right here. And that is where we need marketers to step up and embrace that part of the buying journey and sales process to say, I can do the work with my marketing automation tool until it's in a better state to hand to sales. Sorry, I made that messy for everyone. But the point of it is, you're now moving more of the function to marketing to do a better job with this idea of conversion and those actionable insights we now have in a marketing automation product to help us know where those circles overlap. It gives us visibility. It gives us alignment. It gives us a great case to say, we did this workflow and we improved lead engagement by 20%. Or we did this workflow and we didn't get lead engagement. So we got to change up the value prop and the value add content quickly. So we're not waiting to see the results of campaigns. We're switching it up to get that conversion and interest that we need before we can pass it to sales. Mm -hmm. So I, mean, I just thought of another analogy. I, I, yeah, like I come up with analogies all the time. Everyone laughs at me because I always come up on the fly with these crazy analogies. So I just, I've just thought of one. So you know how this overlap piece is here, right? And the overlap part is what you want. You want the overlap because uh, if you don't have the overlap, then your leads are falling into the hole. But it's like, you know those relay races, the running relay races, when you have the baton and the person who's got the baton, they're running super fast and the person they're going to pass it to is up ahead and they start running and they have to get close and close and close and close and as soon as they're close enough they pass it to them and they grab it and off they go right well if you imagine those two runners one's marketing one sales today most companies what the runner does is they're running and at, when they get kind of close to the other guy they throw the baton <laughs> hope he catches it <laughs> you know and if he does that's off a great he... analogy but that's yeah, that's exactly. what people are doing right so anyway i just thought of that I think that's a great analogy and I think that kind of brings this slide here to life of imagining, you know, how you're passing that baton between marketing and sales. And then even when it has to go the other way, sales might work a lead and find out they're just not ready and they have to pass it back to marketing. Mm -hmm. And again, that baton gets dropped because a lot of times sales doesn't enter information to say, here's the conversation. They're going to be ready to buy in six months. Now I'm going to pass it back to marketing. What can marketing do to communicate until they're ready to buy? So I think that's a great analogy. So we think the opportunity for 2020 is very simple. And this is, you know, sort of what we think 
needs to happen in the whole sales and marketing dialogue, it's time to flip the funnel. You got to flip that funnel. You can't see it as a batch and blast and hope that stuff shakes out at the bottom. You've got to build the platform with good content and build that base at the bottom and start working people up that series of micro yeses. You need to dig deeper about what your clients want to hear because this is a tough exercise. You're going to be seeing the world through the view of what your company does, your products or service do, but you've got to get into the mindset of your customers and what they need to understand about the implications of your product or service to their business problem. And that's really, really important. You need to get your process and people alignment right between sales and marketing and then apply the technology. What, you know, we're going to talk about it in a minute, but one of the biggest problems we see when people go to implement marketing automation is that they haven't talked about what actually qualifies as a lead. How do we know this lead is now qualified and we're ready to get the sales team all over it? They haven't documented that. And when they don't document that lead qualification metric or that lead qualification process, it's next to impossible to apply it to, apply it to your website and next to impossible to apply it to your marketing automation tool. So that's why we have to do that. And then we have to start really choosing the right channels for our organizations because a lot of people are trying to be all things to all people. And as I've said before, and I've, I've written a book on this, it's, you can't be everywhere. You have to choose the right places for you and that's highly dependent on where your customers are and you're not going to know where your customers are and what they're doing if you're not tracking and measuring it and using the tools to do that. So I want to come back up to this for a second and I want you to weigh in on this one, Rob. Um, these are what we think the opportunities for 2020 are. Uh, based on your CRM clients and what you're seeing in the Dynamics community, what would you say, uh, if you want to build on these or if there's any new ones that you have, what would you say the opportunities are for 2020? What would I say the opportunities are? Yes, for companies. Um, it's a whole bunch. <laughs> I think the main, <laughs> the main, the main op, I guess, I think the main opportunity for companies right now uh, is to solve um, their lead uh, generation lead conversion issue and every company has I haven't met a company yet uh, out of the thousands of companies we have worked with um, that have solved this problem so it's the ability to to generate and convert leads in a much more structured fashion by leveraging focusing on the buyer journey so I think that in and of itself if you take a really hard look at your company and say are we getting the considerations that we should be getting and what I mean by, for those of you who don't know what I mean by that, in case you don't know what I mean by that, is let's say right now there's a thousand companies or people looking to buy what it is your company sells. So if all thousand of you of those um, consider your company as one of the options, then you've got maximum considerations. The reality is no one has 100% consideration unless you're Tesla or something <laughs> or Apple. So now what you've got right. is you've got the situation where how do I increase that? So if I'm only getting 20, and most companies don't even know what their considerations are because that's hard to figure out. So if you can just take a cold hard look at that and, and fix that problem, um, you'll be off to the races. I think you're absolutely right. And I, and I do think that that's um, a place where people struggle a little bit. And, you know, with, with good, with good reason. A lot of companies aren't documenting their buyer personas. And I think that's a number one step for people to get right. Document the people that the criteria that the people are using and those people being the best possible people who could buy from you. What's the yeah. criteria they're using to make a decision and what process are they going through to review information? The sooner you can get that documented and down and then apply it to what you're doing on your website is is where you're going to start to win big and there's there's lots of resources available out there for people um, we've built a buyer persona template on our own website that people can access and download but you know that's the first thing i i rarely walk into a company where i say to them so where are your buyer personas who are you selling to and how are they buying from you i rarely walk into a company where they've got that documented and that's an easy fix a marketer could go out tomorrow and start fixing that problem and then by knowing that, they'll be able to know what to apply into the marketing automation tool. So I think that's a big opportunity for 2020. Um, 
Tia, I don't know if we have any uh, questions yet on, on the webinar, but I know you, you've you been collecting a couple of questions there as we go. Do you want to weigh in with a question? Yes, absolutely, Marie. Uh, I have a couple of questions that just came through. Uh, number one would be, what do I need to do to get started and what questions I need to ask internally to start marketing automations in my company? Awesome. Okay, great question. So as I was just saying, um, I think to get started, you want to document a couple of things. And first and foremost, you want to document those buyer personas. And secondly, you want to document that lead qualification process. How do we know that a person is ready to buy? What are the things we're looking for? What are the attributes that they have? So here's a great example. And this is one I love to use for technology companies. We went through a real phase in the, the mid, uh, you know, 2000, early 2010s, 11s, 12s, where technology companies felt that the ultimate conversion point was free trial, get a free trial. And we all know today in our busy lives that the value of offering a free trial to someone isn't really that great. It's not really that high value because if I'm actively out looking for a technology solution, as an example, let's say I'm, I'm out actively looking to put a new accounting system into my company. I have a lot of problems that I have to sort out within my organization before I'm even ready to start looking at software. So putting in a tool and using a tool when I'm in the process of trying to figure out who's going to be using it. What are the business processes that I'm going to have to follow to make this work? What problems am I trying to fix by taking the time and money to put in a new accounting system? Offering me a free trial is really super low value. And so a lot of companies were thinking this was the ultimate conversion point. If we can just get people to our website and offer them a free trial or a free demo, they'll take it. And what we now know, as we've continued to document and study the buyer process, that first and foremost, a whole bunch of things have to happen before you get to that point, and that that's probably the wrong conversion point. And that once that conversion point, we've worked with companies who offer free trials, less than 1% of the free trials actually converted to a customer. Why was that? Because the organization that they were trying to sell to had business processes that had to be addressed, that had a buying committee that had to be served, that had a whole bunch of information on return on investment that had to be addressed before they could even launch the project. And Rob, I know you at CRM Dynamics do an incredibly good job of helping customers before they make the CRM decision understand why are they doing it? Who's it going to help? What's it going to solve? And I'm sure you would agree that a free trial as a conversion point is of low value, but showing people how they're going to quickly get up and running on a CRM with the right process in place is much more higher value. And therefore a document or a download around that is going to get people into the buyer process faster than a free trial. Yeah. A so free trial is a really blunt kind of, sales tool. Exactly. And you know, as we discussed, it's not the sales process we need here, it's the buyer journey. So when you are documenting your lead qualification process, it's important to have an honest conversation in your organization of what qualifies as a lead. What do we want that person to already know, be able to do, be able to discuss before we put them into a process where we're going to spend a lot of time and money from a sales perspective. And a lot of companies just don't have that down. And so get that right. And then also document those buyer personas. Great. Thanks, Marie. Do you have another question, Tia? Yeah, we have quite a few questions, yeah. actually. Um, this is a question for Rob. Can Click Dimension integrate with hosted CRM? With hosted CRM? Yes. So um, I don't fully understand the question, but I'm assuming you're saying can it? So Click Dimensions actually gets installed inside of Dynamics 365. So it, it, it works like one, um, one system. And so the answer to that is yes. <laughs> yes, it can. Great. Thank you. Um, can, I, can I just maybe interpret and ask this question of you, though, Rob? Um, is Click Dimensions considered a cloud product? Mm, yes. A SaaS, a software okay. as a service. So it's, okay. it's an add-in to Dynamics. The way I would describe it, it's an add-in to Dynamics 365 that allows you to do uh, marketing automation. So, and Click Dimensions is, is one of the options customers have. And, um, but it's a good option. And for those of you who are considering 
um, uh, either a new marketing automation tool or uh, you know implementing one for the very first time that is absolutely something that we can help you with we we know all of them and depending on what you're trying to do we can help you pick the right one and I think that's a question that a lot of people in the dynamics community have been asking because I know myself I have a client who has a um, a hosted version of dynamics and they have a protocol in their organization that says they're not allowed to use cloud-based products for security reasons so they have to really consider how a product then gets integrated into their hosted version and I know that is a technology question that that often gets asked and I know your company is really good at answering those questions yeah, it's really easy to install. It takes no time at all. So it's if it, if you've are, if the if the customer that's asking that question, if you've already decided that you're implementing Click Dimensions or about to make the decision on that, and you want some help doing that, our our team does that every day. Great, great. I yeah. Have yeah. Any other questions? Yes, I do. I have a few more questions. Um, the next one would be, what is the ideal sized organizations that should look at marketing automation? And is marketing automation geared to B2B or B2C or both? That's a great question. Um, and I'm going to jump off on that one first, Rob, and then I'll let you weigh in. Um, there's a lot of different products out there, and we have also evaluated many of them and help clients implement many of them. And it really comes down to how many people in your organization are going to be actively managing this and how much volume you can generate on your website on a monthly basis with leads in as one component and I'm only one of making the decision around what tool you should be putting in place there. So the simple answer is I think every organization today, whether they're B2B or B2C, need to be actively considering marketing automation. Whether they're big, small, you know, two people versus 5,000 people, you need to be considering this and figuring this out. Now, how you figure it out and what tools you choose to use is going to be different for every organization based on their size, volume and activity within their marketing department, volume and activity on their website and who's using the tool and, and how they're going to be managing their processes in-house. So you want to look at all those things because there are some really basic products out in the marketplace today like MailChimp that work for small business companies or constant contact and they can work for you know companies with less than five people that will have email functionality and they're trying to adapt to be more marketing automation. I know Constant Contact has recently uh, released um, a product where you can put up a really simple website using them and it's all integrated into an email and how marketing uh, email workflows can be launched off that website. So if you're a, you know, a, a vet a veterinarian in the local community or you're running a pet grooming service, that kind of tool could work really well for you. If you're a larger organization and you have a more complex sales process, you're going to want to look at more complex products like the products that sit in front of Dynamics. And you're going to want to really establish um, what your processes are and how people are going to be using the tool. So my opinion is there's not a company out there today that doesn't need to be addressing this, regardless of who they're selling to and how big they are. But how you go about executing it is going to be a matter of what your organization can afford, the team you have in house and the processes you have in place. Mm -hmm. Rob, I, do you want I, to weigh in on that? Yes, yeah, so I agree with that. So what I would say simply is um, the question around what size of company needs marketing automation i would suggest that every company needs marketing automation so if you were to start a new business tomorrow there's a few things you do you'd go get a bank account you would set up the the company properly right as a legal a legal entity and the one thing you would go do you'd go get a website right you probably would not even consider having a business any business without a website today and marketing automation is part of that and so even if it's simple. So if you if you truly believe that the buyer process or the buyer journey is changing and has changed and your company wants to get as many of those considerations as you can and their your buyer is 60 to whatever 90% of the way through the process before they actually find you and reach out to you, 
you have to have marketing automation as part of your business plan. Every business should have that as part of their business plan for sales and marketing. <clears throat> the, um, the other part of the question was around B2B, B2C. Um, it's both. Uh, I know it's really easy to see the, con the connection in B2C, right? Because even your veterinarian example right now, um, the B2B can sometimes be a little bit harder to see the connection. But if you think about what we do, we sell, we sell an enterprise class CRM system called Dynamics 365. We are, we are really a B2B company. And we spend an inordinate amount of our sales and marketing budget on creating content, um, uh, doing events like this even, right? To educate our potential customer base so that we can help you solve a problem. And so I think uh, it is a B2B, it is a B2C, and no matter how big your company is, you need some form of marketing automation. Even if it's, if you're a tiny company, maybe you're using something really simple or doing it manually, <laughs> um, but you need to need to be doing this. Thank you, that's, uh, that's good, good advice. Um, T, do we have time for one more question? I think we do. Yes, we do. Um, so last question, from start to finish, what would be a reasonable time frame to implement marketing automations and when do we get to see the actual result from these digital transformations? That's a great question. So I, I'm always a bearer of bad news on the answer to this question. So I apologize, but you know, if you're, it depends on where you're starting from. If you're starting from a dead stop, and what I mean by dead stop is go onto your website right now and look at the number of places on your website where people can engage with you without having to talk to anyone. How many landing pages do you have? How many pieces of content can people consume without getting involved with you? How far into the buyer journey can they get? And then once they've communicated with you through some mechanism, whether it's through social, through a clicking on an ad through hitting your website and downloading a piece of content. How do you start the conversation before it gets to the point where you have to pick up the phone and call someone? So depending on how sophisticated that is for you today. So let's say all you have on your website is contact us. And I call that stand as you're starting from a standing stop. If all you can do on your website is use the contact us button and hope somebody picks up the phone and call you, then you've got a lot of pieces to integrate. So I usually estimate that it takes, when we work with clients, it takes four to six weeks to build the strategy and do the research. We mine data in a website to find out what's happening in your online presence today, what's happening in your Google Analytics, what are people doing on your site, what are they doing with your site. We then go through a process of identifying the process of lead handoff from sales to marketing, at which point then you can make a decision about what the right tool is. Now you've got a content plan you're gonna implement into it and set the tool up and get it running. And I think once you've done all that, <clears throat> you can get the legwork done in less than six months, but now you gotta start pushing content out and testing it, and you probably need another six months to test it, iterate it, and evolve it. So if all you have on your website right now is contact us, you probably got about 12 months of work ahead of you. And that's from start to finish. And within the first 90 days of launching a new content strategy and using a new tool, you should start to see results. But whether or not those are the results exactly that you need, you're gonna to have to tweak and evolve and keep testing. So we tell people if you have no content strategy today, you're probably gonna need 12, months to get everything up and going. And I know that sounds scary for people, but there's also ways you can do a quick start program. And I know CRM Dynamics is very much involved in quick start programs on both the CRM side and the marketing automation side. So I highly um, encourage you to talk to Rob and his team about quick start programs, which will get you something today so that you can start building out the plan for tomorrow. Um, Rob, do you have other observations on that? Yeah, just a quick comment. Um, uh, all, all organizations need to get on this digital transformation bandwagon, if you will. And all digital transformation means is as a company, you're going to be using more digital technologies and business processes to, to manage your business. And not only in the sales and marketing uh, 
area either, like in, in all areas of your business. And I know this is, this story is overused in presentations, but the Uber, the Uber story, taking a taxi cab, right? So they use technology to totally solve the problem that I didn't know even there was a problem <laughs> with taking a cab. They made it easier. They put their buyer at the center of what they wanted to do and they used technology and leverage technology to create a better experience for the actual consumer of that service. So digital transformation is all about how can you provide an amazing experience for your customer using digital technology so that you can service them better, uh, you can use data and do the right thing at the right time, business analytics, there's a lot of different tools we can talk about. If you're really interested to know how long it's gonna take your company to see some positive ROI from transforming digitally, one of the things we can do if you're interested, anyone on the, on the call today, that test I said we do, we'd be happy to do that, um, that lead test uh, on your company. All you need to do is let us know through the email. Just email us and say, yeah, I'd like to get our, our company tested. We won't tell you when we're going to do it for obvious reasons. <laughs> and uh, when we do it, we'll report back and give you a report. What that tells us, it gives us an indication of your digital um, transformation maturity. Right? Because if you pass the test with flying colors, which I almost will guarantee none of you will, <laughs> but um, then we know that you're already very digitally mature. Uh, and if you fail it miserably, uh, we have there's about 16 different areas that we look at. We'll be able to tell you the areas that you failed, why we think you failed, and what you can do about it. And that as an indicator of what else might be wrong in the in your sales and marketing process. So if anyone wants to take us up on that, um, that that offer, it doesn't cost anything, and we'd be be happy to do that. So I think that's a great note for us to wrap up today. Um, CRM Dynamics can do the lead test. Marketing Copilot also does content audits and website audits on conversion points to quickly sum up where you might have an opportunity to improve the con content and improve the conversion points on your website. We'd also be happy to do that free of charge for anybody on the call today if they wanted to figure out how to start this uh, content strategy journey for their company. So I think those are two great offers and I know uh, Tia will be following up to send out uh, the link to the to the webinar today and and you'll have contact details for both of us and um, that's a great way to start if you if you're struggling right now and you think that your organization is really struggling to embrace this transformation I think that's a great way to bring back information to your organization and say you know here's some, just some basic data about what's happening on our website and in our, with our web presence today, and let's get let's get going and fix this. So I think those are two great offers. Would you agree, Rob? Yep, perfect. That's awesome. Excellent. So T, I'm going to hand it back to you to wrap up. And yes. thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. Great. Thank you so much, uh, Marie and Rob. Uh, we really appreciate your time this morning. I uh, wanted to let everyone know that the recorded version from today's webinar will be available in our YouTube channel. You can subscribe to our channel at CRM Dynamics uh, CA to learn more about Microsoft Dynamics 365 or get more insight on other relevant D365 topics. Also visit our website at crmdynamics.com and marketingcopilot.com for any marketing insights from Marie. And um, thank you again for your time and uh, have, a, have a Dynamics Day. Thanks, Tia. Thank you. Thanks, Marie. Thank Thanks, you. Marie. Bye, everyone. Bye.